What is going on guys, it's Bart coming to you once again with some more anatomy videos. So we're about to enter a new chapter in our lives, investigating the muscles of the lower limbs. We did the bones already, now we're about to do the muscles of the lower limb. So this is our chance to figure out why the heck we were focusing so much of our effort, memorizing all those various markers from our skeletal system videos. Now. Moving forward, I want to emphasize how important it is to actually learn where these muscles insert and where they originate. So our biggest vocabulary words today are probably going to be origin and insertion. When origin is, is it the most immovable bone? And the insertion is the more movable bone. For example, usually the pelvis is going to have points of origin because usually you don't move the pelvis. Whereas the femur is going to have points of insertion because the femur is the more movable bone. There are some exceptions. For example, the muscle right in front of you, the psoas muscle can either bend the spine or it can flex or yes, flex the femur so depending on which bone is moving the femur or the spine then the spine could be the origin or the femur could be the origin or the spine could be the insertion and the femur could be the insertion but more on that later when i talk about this muscle specifically so moving forward with the uh, muscles of the hip we're going to break up our discussion into three groups of muscles. We're gonna have the muscles on the front or the anterior muscles, we're gonna have the muscles in the back or the posterior muscles, and then we're gonna have the muscles that are deep in the back, the deep posterior muscles. So the superficial posterior muscles are going to be over the deep posterior muscles, but they're both going to be posterior or in the back of the body. So we're going to start with the muscles on the posterior portion, the superficial posterior muscles. You have three of them, actually. And the first one you've probably heard of, and that muscle is called the gluteus maximus, the gluteus maximus. But other gluteal muscles are underneath the gluteus maximus. Those are called the gluteus minimus and the gluteus medius. Now, the function of each of these three muscles differs drastically, and that is a result of where they actually insert on the femur. As you can see, the gluteus maximus actually inserts into the gluteal tuberosity and the linear aspera in the back of the femur, which you might have remembered from a previous video. Um, and if you sort of imagine this gluteus maximus contracting, you can just imagine what effect that would have on the femur. If this gluteus maximus muscle contracts, it actually pulls the femur backward. It makes it extend. And that is the primary function of the gluteus maximus. It is the primary extensor of the hip. And that's a result, a direct result of it inserting along the back of the femur. So now when we go back and we look at the gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus, we notice that it's not neither of them are actually connected to the gluteal tuberosity. What they're connected to is the greater trochanter. The greater trochanter. And you can imagine what the consequence or any implication of that might be. If you contract the gluteus medius or the gluteus minimus and pull on the greater trochanter, you'll see a seesaw-like effect where this actually functions like a fulcrum, causing the diaphysis of the femur to actually move away from the body. The greater trochanter moves towards the body, the head functions as a fulcrum, causing the diaphysis to move away from the body. This is a process called abduction. So the gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus are abductors, whereas the gluteus maximus is an extensor of the thigh or hip. And this is a direct result of the attachment points. Alrighty, before I end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to the nervous aspect of these muscles. Now, the 
gluteal muscles, all three are all innervated by the gluteal nerve, but they're innervated by different branches. Since the gluteus maximus is the odd man out, it's innervated by a different branch than the gluteus medius or the gluteus minimus. Now here's where it gets a little bit confusing because the gluteus maximus is on the top, but it is innervated by the inferior gluteal, whereas the medius and minimus are on the bottom, but they're innervated by the superior gluteal. So it's a little bit opposite of what you would think. So just remember that the innervation of the gluteal muscles is a little bit weird, and that should help you remember a little bit that it is the opposite of what you would think. The gluteus maximus is innervated by the inferior gluteal nerve, and the gluteus minimus medius are innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. So it's a little bit opposite of what you would think. Alrighty, so this video was created using anatomy learning software. Please visit their website, show them some support. Next video, we're going to be going over the deep muscles of the gluteal region. Alright, and I'll see you. Take care. Goodbye.